when you go to my next guest blog, she has a one-line bio which reads, designer of Sizzix pop-up dies. And I think that sums it up perfectly. Karen Berniston has a degree in civil engineering. Her husband is an engineer, and she says she has two quirky kids. She started scrapbooking after the birth of her twins, but had already been rubber stamping for a decade. I hear that she has a rubber stamp collection that's rumored to be in the thousands. She's my new best friend. <laughs> and Karen, be sure to click Ask to Speak so I can get you in the queue to make sure you're here. Great. Karen's early work was published in Creating Keepsakes, Memory Makers, Scrapbooks, Etc., and Rubber Stamping Madness, magazines and idea books. Since 2006, she has been a freelance instructor and designer, and she is a designer of Sizzix Pop-Up Dies. Here to tell us all about week two of the Sizzix Triple Play Blog Hop is Karen Berniston. Hi, Karen. Hey, guys. Oh, my gosh, that bio sounded so much better than uh, what I just sent you, which was, oh, I forgot to send you a bio. Say that I designed the Sizzix Dies. Um, I am so excited. I have to say thank you to Tiffany because this was such an exciting opportunity to come on here and talk about what we are really excited about. Eileen's here too. The Civics Triple Play Blog Hop. And it only just started this last week. You can still see all the fabulous designs that were made with Eileen's house die. And then this coming Thursday, we're going to be using one of my dies. So that's why I'm here. And Tiff, if you can put up that slide one, yeah. Just kind of slide that out of the way. I'm going to be talking about the twist cubes in just a second. But because I have eight minutes and not anything particular to demo, uh, Tiffany asked if I could just spend a couple minutes talking about my line with Sizzix. Like I say, I designed the pop-up dies. And if you want to see all of my dies, you can just go to Sizzix.com or my blog. But Sizzix.com is a great place to go. Just put Karen Berniston in the search engine, or you can put pop-up dies, and they'll all come up. But Tiffany, if you should, uh, throw up a slide, like maybe number three, the house. Let's see if that comes up. Okay, so there's a little close-up of one of my dies. And that one, let's slide it out of the way. I have to slide too. <laughs> is done in kind of a traditional welcome to the neighborhood type of color scheme. But the beauty with dies is that you get to pick your colors, your materials, your theme, your decorations. So I wanted to show kind of variety here. Here's a little... Christmas album that I did last year, and I used that house, that one you just saw on the slide, this time as a gingerbread house. Let's see if I can just throw that up to the camera. So I just wanted to show that you can use these dies and make a huge variety of stuff. So let's see, what's my next slide? I've got a cheat sheet right over here. Uh, slide number four is the cake. Let's throw that up. Okay, wait, now I have to slide it. Yeah, so that's another one of the dies. It's a little three-dimensional pop-up cake, and you see it in the slide there in, you know, some pretty traditional kind of cake colors. And then here's another example of it, a birthday card I did for my daughter last year where, let me see, I'll go like this. You open it, and now I've used that same die, this time just using some ribbon on the tears and a little picture of Emma from the torso up. And then now it's going to look like a dress. So you really can get very creative with them. Okay, I have another slide. It is number six, the sleigh. I'm just showing a few of these because I don't have a ton of time. Oh, wait, I have to slide it out of the way. I'm sliding. Okay. So that's a close-up of the inside of this card here. And I used another Civic die. It's called a Movers and Shapers. And it cuts the card itself with the window already in it. So that makes it really quick to do the card itself. And then when you open that, there's the card itself that you saw in that slide. And that sleigh, oops, got to hold that open. That sleigh is one of the dies. And then Santa and his little bag of toys, that's a separate die that can be used on its own, but it happens to notch in perfectly to make this little scene. I'm kind of focusing on the Christmas ones because that's the season coming up. One more slide, and then we'll talk about the twist cube. Uh, slide number seven, which is the snowman. Got to get my cards here. There, look at that little guy. He's one of my favorites. Okay, Snowman. You're looking at a little close-up of this card here where I've done the snowman. 
And everything that you see there on the snowman, with, with the exception of his scarf, which is ribbon, but all these other things are actually on the die. So you get his hat and his eyes and stick arms and all that. And you can certainly decorate him like a snowman. But he really is just a head and a body. So if you get creative with your own materials and decorations, then maybe the next card you make, he's going to be a sock monkey. So that's done here. Let me just kind of squish him open a little bit there. So that's made with the pop-up snowman die. And I actually put socks through my die cut machine and cut it with the die. Because anything you can cut with a pair of scissors, you can cut with a steel rule die from Sizzix. So that means transparency, fabric, felt, anything. So with pop-ups, you kind of have to choose materials that can fold and hold a shape. So a lot of times I cut them out of cardstock and then cover them with something else fun. But you can use the, the die to make like your felt covering for them. Okay, that was quick. I know, but I only have eight minutes. So, and I know I'm talking fast, but I'm nervous. Um, okay, this week, triple play dump blog hop. Every Thursday, from now until December 16th, including Thanksgiving, there is going to be a die featured on our blog hop. Over 50 designers are participating. If you didn't see the house was that were done last week with uh, Eileen's die, you got to go check them out. You can go to any of our blogs, really, my blog, Eileen's blog, or you can just go, there it is, beautiful, karenbernardson.typepad.com. And you're looking for that little logo. When you see that little logo there that says Triple Play Blog Hop, you can click on that logo. It'll go to the Civics blog. It'll show you all the designers. Or it's got a navigation button system that was designed by Jen Goody, and it's fabulous. You just go forward, back, and it'll just take you right around the ring, and you can see them all. Okay, this week we're using one of my brand new dies. It is the Twist Cube. And I'm going to show you how it works. Folds flat like this, pull, and then it comes up into a cube. And I wanted to show it to you just plain black like this because this is what we challenged our designers to make. I sent them pieces to make a black twist cube like this. What it's going to become, I have no idea. But when you're ready to collapse it, you just give it a twist. And down it's going to go. So I'll show you just, do I have time, Tiffany, I hope, to just show a couple little samples that I've done with the twist cube because I didn't start my timer like I was instructed to do. Okay, real quick. Okay. Here is one using the twist cube. I recently moved from Colorado to Texas, and this was a little card that I made to commemorate that. And I wanted to show inside here, it says we've moved, and there's my twist cube flattened. And you can see it really gets very flat. If you don't put a lot of thick embellishments and stuff on it, it's going to get down to about a quarter of an inch when it's collapsed. So if you're doing it inside a card, just make a little double fold card like that, and then that's going to hold it, you know, so that your card can be flat in an envelope and it doesn't have to be like, you know, this. Okay, so inside there, there's my cube, and on this one, I made it into a little moving box, and then it kind of has, well, most of my new address on it, come on, we're on the internet, <laughs> and I just decorated each side with various things. You kind of get a little sense here on the back. You can see how the twist cube works. It actually has a rubber band inside. And so that's what helps it go down and what helps it come up. You, you put it on a brad so it spins. Okay? And then when you want to close it, because it spins, let's see, I'm going to do it this way. You don't need to see my face while I do this. Because it spins, you just need to hold your thumb against the base somewhere while you're twisting. And then when you give it a twist, it's going to go right down. See, you never have to push on it. Don't push. No pushy. No pushy pushy. Just twist. Okay? That's one, and I'll get to show you one more example. And Eileen's here in the chat room today, or maybe she's still at the barn. I don't know. She probably isn't watching at the moment, but maybe later. Uh, this was a happy accident, but I discovered that the twist cube fits perfectly in one of Eileen's dies. This is, and I see it's really bright, but this is the memo holder die. It, her dies actually cut mat board or chip board, and they make these really cool little boxes and containers. And so this particular one is meant to hold like a 3x3 three three sticky note pad, but in this case, it actually fits the twist cube perfectly, like it was designed for it. Maybe she did design it for me. Actually, hers was out first. Okay, so this one, I cut the cube itself. i got to hold the bottom here. Out of photos. Can we see it? So that's my little nephew, Drew, there a couple years ago. 
He's really quite a bit older now. Drew, if you're watching, look how cute. And then I actually put the photos themselves on the die. You put them face down because you always cut with against the blade for a right-handed twist cube. If you want a left-handed twist cube, then you can do it the other way. And that's always nice for all the lefties that you know. You can send them a twist cube that works the other way. And I will clarify that, yes. Um, so when you uh, collapse this, then it's going to fit perfectly. And then wouldn't that be cute, like a little brag book for Grandma? And then I'm um, just about wrapped up, but I did want to show a little sneak. This is a little project I just made, and I'm not even going to open it for you because I don't think we have time, and because I'm going to put it up on my blog today along with a little video. Okay, so this one uses the twist cube as well. Uh, oh, okay, I'll open it. Someone said open it, open it. Do I have time to open it? Okay. So it has this, this little um, oh, rubber band that will go around this knob, and that's what holds it closed. And then actually the knob is not on this thing. There's a hole in the card. It's actually on top of my twist cube. This is a little card I made. I have twins. So this says one times two. That was when they turned one. And then when I pull this little knob, up comes a little alphabet block. And I actually cut real wood for that block. It is made by Creative Imaginations, and it's thin enough that you can fold it. So this is a really authentic looking block because it's cut out of wood, very thin wood. And then I just, again, I just twist it, and down it goes. Okay, how's that for talking a mile a minute? Okay, Tiffany asked, what dies can I, or what machines can I use? All of my dies are either Bigs or Bigs XL. So they will fit in any of your Big Shot or Big Kick machines, or like the Big Shot Pro if you have one. You can obviously go bigger with your machine. You just can't go smaller. Um, so you can use them in those. You do need a set of long plates, like for most of them, because most of them are the XL size. So this is the Twist Cube, and you'll see it's the long die. And it actually only cuts two pieces. You just need multiples. Okay, yes, Tim Holtz new machine, yes. It will go through the Vagabond. Which machine will do them all? Well, the Big Shot Pro would do everything. It will even do the thick, like, AccuCut dies. It's a big machine. It will go 12 by 12 foot wide. They are too wide for the original machine, yes. Oh, if you buy another die cut machine, you already have three. I know. I know. The physics machines cut everybody else's dies as well. So if you really want to be able to, to do everything steel rule, then you just need to go to your Big Shot Pro. What does one cut look like, and how many do you use? Okay, actually, I did cut that. Okay. The machine cuts these two pieces. You need three of these and two of these. So it's going to take you about one and a quarter sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock. And when you get, oh, I'm, I'm being kicked out. But anyway, it, it, you put it together something like this. And I will have a video instructions for the Twist Cube up on my blog in honor of Thursday. So by Thursday, it'll be there. So anyway, thank you guys. I know my time's up. Thanks for having me.